Hi, this is Paul Hitchcock with Wealth Protected TV. Really excited to have my colleague Christine Allen with us today, who's one of our expert attorneys. And Christine, you and I were kind of talking offline about the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off and the actress that played the assistant to the principal in there, Edie. I read this article, she's older and her family's scared because she lives with somebody who they think is taking advantage of her and she's got dementia. Uh. Yeah, so they applied for a conservatorship and I was, as I was reading this as a novice, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I don't know a lot about how a conservatorship works and probably a lot of others don't. So what, what is with a conservatorship? What, well, here's, here's what I can tell you. When someone's not capable of managing their own personal affairs anymore or their own finances, they can apply to the court for an order to establish a conservatorship. It's essentially a legal relationship where the court puts someone in place who can manage the assets for a conservatee, for someone who can't do it themselves. Or they can give a special orders to allow them to manage their personal affairs. So everything from where the person's going to live, to make sure they're getting adequate medical care, mm -hmm. to make sure they're even being fed properly. So there's, there's essentially two branches of conservatorships. One is a conservatorship of the person, so that's for personal affairs. And the other relates to finances. So when someone can't manage their own finances anymore, or if they can't resist fraud or undue influence. Oh. In either situation, it can be appropriate to apply to the court in order to seek to act for that person on their behalf. Uh, so does this happen a lot in families? Like, well, with this actress here, it's confrontational because there's a guy living with her. They're not married, I don't think. So, I mean, do family members do it? or it, it off, Usually it is a family member who will step in to seek a conservatorship over an individual. And you do often see it after a first spouse passes away, somebody might step in and try to take oh. advantage of the right. surviving spouse. Right. And you know, there's, there's some ways to avoid a conservatorship by setting up an adequate power of attorney oh, to okay. allow uh, you know, somebody to act on your behalf who you trust, but that those aren't always sufficient. And we see that come into play where you see an elderly person often who doesn't understand what's going on, giving away large gifts to right, somebody, right. or suddenly you know, they go over, a bunch of their assets have disappeared, they've been sold. And in that case, if a court grants a conservatorship, the conservatee loses the right to contract, to, to distribute their own property, those kind oh. of things. So it is for the substantial protection of that person. Right. But the court does take it quite seriously. Are there medical tests and stuff like that that are required? You know, there are not, but what will happen is the court will appoint a court investigator who will come and meet with the proposed conservatee. And in most cases, they'll actually appoint a lawyer for mm. the proposed conservatee oh. who will meet with that person. And the court, they will both submit reports to the judge in order to make a determination as to whether or not this individual requires a conservatorship. Uh, because they would be losing substantial legal rights, the courts want to make sure it's the least restrictive means of preserving their care, right. essentially. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that would make sense in this case. And if the guy that lives with Edie, this actress, can he fight it? Absolutely. So what will happen in that case is you, you file your petition for conservatorship, the court does its investigation and submits its reports, and there's a hearing, and anybody can come to the hearing and challenge the petition that is being requested. Mm -hmm. And they'll be given an opportunity to file written objections, and there could very well be a trial uh, before the court would make a decision as right. to whether or not to uh, require a conservatorship. It's no small issue. No, it's not. Yeah. And certainly if one can be avoided, it's for the best, yeah. but sometimes it's the only alternative. And, and avoiding it would be really proper planning, having proper discussions, planning. and just, right. is that? That is a big, right? it's a big help, especially if you have powers of attorney established, right. uh, or trust situation where a successor trustee can step in and manage your assets when you can no longer do it. Um, unfortunately, there are circumstances where that isn't even sufficient. Right. So when you get in a situation where somebody is being subject, subjected to repeated fraud, um, I have had situations like that in the past where people have come and, you know, they've had all the proper planning done and it just turns out that it's not going to be enough. Right. And we go in and, you know, we do the best we can to make sure it's appropriate for the proposed conservatee. And really the court is there as a stopgap to make sure that that's the right uh, solution as well. 
Fantastic, great information. I feel like a lot smarter now after <laughs> talking to you. So thank you so much. Sure, and, of course. Yeah, thank you everybody for uh, for watching. We'll see you next time.